Hello health champions. Today I'm going to talk about the coronavirus in terms of how fast it's growing and where we are on that growth curve. Because the numbers are going up faster than ever and the government is even considering stronger protective measures. But are we doing enough? Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. The quarantine that President Trump is considering it would be illegal to travel in and out of those states that he's considering. And it, it's been met with tremendous critique, both from some people who say that he hasn't done enough, that all of these measures should have been done long, long time ago, and others who say that such measures would be illegal and unconstitutional. And since this statement, the president has retracted that and said there will not be a quarantine, but instead they're going to have a very strong travel advisory. Here are the current corona cases by nation as of March 28th in the top countries. So we have Korea, Netherlands, Switzerland, Great Britain, Iran, France, Germany, Spain, and China, which is where the outbreak started. They had about 80,000 cases, but since then they have been surpassed by Italy and the United States. So Italy had over 90,000 and the US has over 120,000. These numbers don't tell the whole truth because it depends on where you are on that growth curve. And it, of course, it also depends on the population. So China obviously has the largest population, but other than that, the United States has about the same population as all the other countries put together. So if we instead look at the numbers of number of cases per 1 million people. Now we find that the United States is about 300 something. The world average is this dotted line at about 85. And Italy has over 1500 cases per 1 million. Whereas China, even though they are at the end of their growth curve, they have grown and they have shrunk. They are about about in the 50s somewhere. Spain is over 1500. We have Germany, France, and Iran somewhere in the middle. Great Britain, not so much. But Switzerland has the highest number of cases per 1 million with over 1600. We have the Netherlands. And then Korea, which is the other country that was relatively early infected with high numbers never hit very, very high. They ended up around 170 or so. So China and Korea are some of the success stories, if you will, where they are at the end of there. They have passed the peak and yet their numbers didn't get extremely high. You probably heard about flattening the curve. And what is that all about? Well, it means that if we don't control the spread, if we have a doubling effect on that spread and every person goes to infect two other people and we don't control it at all, then there will be a very, very rapid rise that will have a tremendous number of infected cases, of active cases at the same time. And if that number of cases exceed the capacity of the medical system to handle the critical cases, then Anything above that capacity would basically be a casualty. If they were critical and they couldn't get the help, then they would perish. So the biggest goal in the restrictions is to not have too many cases at once, but to flatten the curve to delay the infections so that we would have fewer people at any one time be infected. And then hopefully the healthcare resources would be enough to care for those critical cases. There are a lot of unknowns around this virus and some people are suggesting that it's possible that it might be more like a flu virus, that it's going to be a recurring thing. And in that case, it's not so much about preventing the spread as delaying it. But again, there's a whole lot about this that we don't know. When we look at the curves, we have to keep in mind 
if they're showing us total cases or new cases because most of the curves we see they're pointing straight up like this red line and they're representing total cases and so every day the cases are added to the previous day's cases and that's going to make the curve very sharp if that situation eventually gets resolved then that curve is not going to come down it's going to flatten and on the other hand if we have a curve that represents the new cases every day then that curve once it's resolved is going to end up down towards zero again so just keep that in mind when you look at a curve what is it representing is it the total cases or is it new cases here are the new cases for the united states so at the beginning of the month we had a handful of cases and then it turned into a few hundred and then just about a week 10 days ago we got into the thousands of cases per day and since then as you see pretty much every day the we have more new cases than the preceding day so that indicates that we still have an exponential growth that there is a doubling growth function here and the only thing that we can look at to give us some hope is that the doubling rate is slower than it used to be so there was a while when the double was every day and then every couple of days and then every three four days and eventually now i believe it's around six or eight days that it's doubling so there is some progress but as long as it's doubling then it's still growing very very fast in italy they have probably hit the peak meaning it's far from over but they don't have a doubling rate anymore that the number of cases about 10 days ago the number of new cases about 10 days ago is the same roughly the same level as it is today so hopefully their curve will start turning downward when we look at china this is a month earlier so in february they had their peak at the end of january beginning of february and now at the already at the beginning of march they were down to where they were getting very few new cases and with south korea now we're looking at march again and they had their peak at the end of february beginning of march so they went through the process a lot faster than china they were infected a good bit later but they were pretty quick to hit their peak and then come down so they haven't reached zero or extremely few cases they still run a couple of hundred cases every day but they have definitely come past their peak so here is a growth curve and the peak is where it's critical that's what we want to flatten china passed its peak and they were at the end of that about march 1st south korea have passed their peak and now at the end of march they are at the end of their curve even though there's still quite a few cases occurring italy hopefully are hitting right as we speak have hit their peak and are heading downwards but the us we don't really know where it is it came a little bit later and the growth rate is still very very fast so we still have a doubling rate and nobody knows exactly when that peak is going to hit but there are no official sources that think it's going to happen in the next few weeks but rather probably several weeks or maybe even longer the administration has received a lot of critique of not doing enough early on at first it seemed like oh well this is a chinese problem and this is a european problem and now we know different that every country every region every province every county pretty much has infections so it's just a matter of time of when is it getting out of control so when are we supposed to introduce those stronger measures when are we going to get really really serious when are we going to do those things that we would have to do in an extreme crisis and if we're smart we want to do it at the early stages when it might get out of control that's like prevention or maybe when it's getting out of control we don't want to wait until it's almost out of control or totally out of control or monumentally out of control 
We want to be smart and proactive. We don't want to be reactive. We don't want to do things just because we have to, because we have no other options, because it's just so far gone. This whole pandemic comes at an enormous price. We have different kind of costs. We have lost income from not being able to work. We have lost productivity, which affects companies and nations. We have human suffering and we have tremendous loss of human lives. And then there's even more trickle-down effect. We have people experiencing mental health problems. They get anxious, they get nervous, they get irritable, both from the tension of the whole situation, but also from having their routines disrupted. So instead of going about their daily lives and being productive and doing things they enjoy and, and that can create things, now they're cooped up at home and they often have an increased workload because they're telecommuting, but all their children are home. So now they have to do some homeschooling and there's more friction and more stress than normal. And that is also taking its toll. And we also want to consider the lives lost from non-corona causes that we may have quite a few people who are having non-corona medical emergencies that are now going to fall by the wayside, that we may not have those resources available to care for those people or to prioritize those people because the healthcare system is already overwhelmed by all the critical cases of corona infection. So I would urge everyone watching this video to follow all of the official guidelines, restrict travel, restrict social interaction, and take it seriously. Take personal responsibility. Don't just do the minimum that you have to, but go above and beyond and do everything that you can to contain this spread. And on a positive note, someone they call Mr. P was released after recovering from the coronavirus from a hospital in Italy. And he was 101 years old. And here's the interesting part about that. He was born in 1919 in the middle of the Spanish flu epidemic that claimed some 50 million lives. So his real name and picture were not disclosed, but I think it's a great testament to human endurance and survivability when someone can live that long and even live through two of these pandemics. And here is the suggestion on what not to do. This lady is trying to tell us, I think, to not smoke and not eat cake because it's full of sugar and sugar will diminish your immune system. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you take a look at that one also. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.